you know, that, that comes into play. So it, it actually is a time saver if you will go and verify. The other thing that I, I've found over the years is sometimes the manager doesn't want to observe it and provide coaching because they don't know how to do what it is they're asking the person to do. Welcome again to It Doesn't Take a Genius, conversation with introspective perspectives and pithy points of view. Here are your hosts, my friends, Max and Marty. I think that's Mark and Mike. Yeah, whatever. Ramsey! Oops. <laughs> oops. Oh, oh, your head was in the way. I'm sorry. It says oops. oops. I, I got it. I got yeah. it. Yeah, I didn't know if it was backwards in the uh, visual rendering there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The big red oops button. Some people, some people have an easy button. Not yes. me. Not me. My life is defined by the oops button. <laughs> yeah. Pain, the great teacher. So, so I hear you have a a story for us of uh, of a, a recent oopsie moment. Oh yes, yes, yes. And I violated my number one rule uh, of leadership. So, uh, yeah, just tons of oops here. So, yeah, we had a team, a uh, younger team, uh, and team of leaders, and uh, and these these three folks are in charge of a bigger team, and mm-hmm. and uh, we'd we'd uh, ask them to go do some coaching with those with their team members. You know, sit down and you know ask them questions. Even gave them some of the questions and walk them through a discovery process of you know what what else could we do? What's next? Uh, you know, what are our goals? What are, what's getting in the way? You know, all those wonderful coaching questions. Yep. And, uh, you know, we, we sent them out into the world and they didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so we, so, you know, other people talked to them. We reiterated, this was the path forward. We thought this was the, you know, the fastest path to improve performance was, you know, coaching and working with your people in an informal, a tactical and a strategic manner. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they didn't do it. So, uh, you know, the, the, one of my clients, he, you know, the, my client on this project said, just go sit next to him and just watch, huh. uh-huh. you know, just, just sit there and observe. And it took, you know, about 2.3 seconds to figure out that, the yeah, they didn't have the ability to apply the skills in a game situation. They understood the concepts, uh, right? But when it came to the actual interactions with their team members, just just wasn't there. So, so you and I have talked about awareness and action being the two big parts of coaching. You know that somebody gets an insight, they have awareness, and then they go take action. There's actual progress made. And I guess if I hear you correctly, in your mind, they really did have awareness. They 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 attended the the workshops they they had some insights but then they just for whatever reason had not figured out how to translate that into practical things when they got back to the workplace exactly exactly huh. and so huh. we had uh we had this model that we we're, we're using with this business and and it was it was okay we're going to model it we're going to teach it and then we're going to expect it so okay. model it right we we did it with them yeah, we did it, you know, one on one with meetings. Then we had a workshop, we taught it. And then, as you can tell, right, there was an expectation by leadership that they would go do it. Hmm. And that, you know, leadership hats off the leadership, they kept following up saying, All right, how's that going? It's, it's not, you know, and so I realized that the model was flawed. And the model that violated my number one leadership rule, which is if I haven't seen you do it, I will assume you can't. If I haven't seen you do it, I'm going to assume you can't do it. That's correct. Okay. So, so okay. yeah, you, you know, you as the leader, you say, all right, go pull that report. Uh, you know, go talk to that customer about this issue. Uh, go write an article for our blog, go post something on social media, go, Anything that you're asking your people to do, if you assume they can't do it until you see them do it, you will save yourself tons of time and frustration, aggravation, and misery. Um, So I'm not saying that your team members aren't smart. I'm just saying this may be a skill that they don't have. Yeah. So you may have modeled it. You may have taught it. You may expect it. 
But before you can expect it, you have to go see if they can do it. Then and only but, then can you expect it on a consistent basis. Yeah, and and because if you if you don't go check, you're making some assumptions, and we know what happens when you assume. Uh, and and I would gather uh, that's a pretty bad pretty bad feedback loop, right? Like if you wait a year before figuring that out, you have to circle all the way back around to okay, we need to retrain and show you some new things and whatever else it is that you have to accomplish. You could save yourself a year's worth of trouble just by verifying pretty much from the get go. Yeah, the old. Uh, I wonder if they know what I mean by. Uh huh. The blank. I wonder if they know what I mean by. Yep. Talk to this customer, uh, you, you know, you know, prospect, uh, you know, develop a few leads for this particular product. Yep. Uh, you know, all these things that, that maybe, and, and I think we're most guilty of this when we promote people to a management position. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's, there's this idea that once I label someone a manager, it, it's kind of like the matrix they plug right. something in the back of their head and they downloaded everything they need to be a coach, a leader, a manager, an administrator, uh, you know, it just all magically appeared in there. And then we seemed a little puzzled when they're not doing some of these, the, these skills. Yeah. And it's like, well, I gave them the title, but I didn't give them the ability to do that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. What's that, what's that book? Uh, what got you here? Won't get you there. Yeah. The Marshall Goldsmith. Yeah. 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 So so all the things that made you great in your previous role and the reason yeah. you stood out and I promoted you, zero bearing on how successful you'll be in your new role. Especially if, um, you know, what got you here was ownership. You took ownership and and really, you know, were a self-starter. But if you don't know what to take ownership of, what's, you know, what's the thing that you need to be self-starting on, you know, learning how to coach, learning how to ask good questions, learning how to delegate. I don't know what it is, but um, I mean, you just don't even have the tools, let alone the vocabulary to do that. So a training session just by itself isn't, isn't going to help you. So I, I get what you're saying there it makes a ton of sense. Oh yeah. Well, and then it was, it was, it was so easily adopted. With just a few in the moment coaching opportunities, uh -huh. uh, you, you know, in the in the in the real world, you know, team member comes up and the uh, you know, managers have an interaction, and you know, and basically we were working on what questions, uh, you know, what else could you do, what are you going to do next, uh, you know, what would that look like? Uh, so and, these are the 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 questions that you're training these managers how to use with their people. Exactly. Exactly. Gotcha. And so and so. You know, and I and I warned the managers ahead of time. I said, when you ask these questions, your team members are going to have much better ideas than you ever dreamed of. Hmm. And sure enough, that was the case every Indeed. single time. Yeah, Just, you know, I we, mean, immediate success. Yeah, yeah. We were, we were kind of thinking, all right, what would I, you know, I've got this, I've got this prospect, and you know, what could I do? You know, what would be my next step here? What's something I could do to to move this, you know, through the sales process? Yeah. And we, you know, as managers, we'd brainstorm a couple things. We'd call the team member over and go, "Hey, did you did you see that prospect that I assigned to you?" Yeah, yeah, I read that over. All right, so what are you going to do next with them? And they'd tell us, and we'd be like, "Oh." <laughs> that's oh, a oh, great that, idea. Oh, yeah mm, yes didn't think of that yeah that's much better than what i was thinking right so when do you think you can have that done by well, i'm gonna go work on it right now fantastic all right i'll follow up <laughs> you know, so, that's great. and so it was just so so amazing uh the the yeah the, the talent that was always there the potential that was always there who could be untapped by coaching, but it couldn't be untapped by coaching until we got over the assumption that everybody with a manager title knew how to coach. Yeah. Yeah. Makes, makes perfect sense. I I'll share a story of uh, a time that I did this and, uh, and unfortunately we didn't have an immediate home run, but it was still worth it. Uh, a manager uh, brought uh, an employee in for a, like a formal coaching session. This was like their monthly sit down. I said, you know, I, I'll sure I'll stick around and observe. I'm absolutely happy to do that. And uh, the manager, you know, just started visibly shaking. He was asking questions. He was getting answers and he just started shaking. 
And, uh, you know, we wrapped up the session, no big ahas, you know, the guy committed to some things that he was going to do and, you know, it was okay. Um, and then the manager said, I gotta go smoke. And, uh, so we went and stood outside while he complained that this employee knew exactly what he should be doing. And he wasn't saying those things. He was given half-hearted answers, you know, about, about the, the side issues. And I said, well, you know, my guess is one of two things, you know, one is um, maybe you should bring that up and say, is that really what you think is the most important thing? Like, go ahead and in the moment, do some challenging. I said, but that, you know what else might be happening is you and he don't agree on what's the most important next thing. And if he's not bought in, he's not bought in. So why don't you just take him up on the offer of what he says he'll commit to? And then in a month from now, we can take the next step, right? We can, we can go back and say, how did that work? Did, did it, did it pan out the way you thought it would? What, you know, what are, what are going to be your next steps? What progress have you made? What could you do next? So, um, so even when it doesn't go well, you know, it's, it's still, uh, it, it's still a, a move forward because the guy did get some experience in coaching and he did see that, you know, well, Hey, even this, if this doesn't become a home run, it still was valuable for me. Oh yeah. Yeah. What do we always say? The, 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 the person you're coaching's half you know almost good idea implemented with a hundred percent enthusiasm yep. is 10 times better than your perfect idea implemented with 50 percent enthusiasm that's right so yeah yeah i'll find a way to make my idea work yeah. and then as you as you adeptly pointed out at some point i figure out it doesn't work or it's really a much more difficult way to do it then i'll circle back and say hey i'd like some ideas on how to do this better yeah. yeah and it. now they're they're the, the the student is ready for the learning they're they're, they're the receptive to right. the to the to the good stuff okay well so, so let me ask you this i didn't tell you i was going to ask this but let me ask you uh something that i think stymies a lot of people why don't more leaders go do the check what are the things that get in the way of us going and verifying that our training is understood and that our people can meet the expectations we're going to have for them. What what gets in the way of us going and and checking? Well, I think there's the assumption first of all. Yeah. Uh, you know, and 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 I think you know a lot of managers have a to do list. Yeah. And so yeah yeah I, I I told him to do that. I checked it off my list, and that you know we always talk about you know great coaching involves follow up. Yeah. And so you know follow up would mean. Now I got to add something else to my list. Yep. And the list is just too long as it is. So, so, you know, I've, I've handed this off. I've asked, I've made a request and I'm just not going to follow up because, you know, the, the time factor, I just yeah. believe I'm too busy to do it. And that what's that old adage? We don't have time to do it right the first time, but we got plenty of time to do it right the second time, <laughs> uh, you know, so to do it over. So, yeah. uh, you know, that, that comes into play. So it, it actually, is a time saver if you will go and verify. The other thing that I, I've found over the years is sometimes the manager doesn't want to observe it and provide coaching because they don't know how to do what it is they're asking the person to do. Oh, and yep. they, they don't want to be found out. Yep. And so, yeah, I need you to call this customer back and set an appointment. Well, can you show me boss? Uh, well, you know, just, just follow the script. Uh, yeah, I got a meeting I got to get to. <laughs> you know, like, like I've never, maybe I've never done that. Yeah. And I'm not saying that, that, that every manager has to be, has to be capable or have the same capabilities of all their team members. That's impossible. Um, but it's okay to say, yeah, I don't know how to do that. But a lot of managers don't want to admit that Mm -hmm. there, there are things that they can't do. So, so I, I would say, yeah, the, the, the assumption, uh, the belief that there's not enough time. And, and then the fact that, that I don't want to be embarrassed by admitting that I don't know how to do what I just asked you to do. So we've talked about the assumption and, and I agree with you on the time issue, you know, that it's a, it's, it's like that shotgun sales meeting, you know, let's, you know, here's, here's the 10 things that I've noticed during the week and I'm going to shoot them off at a, at a Saturday morning sales meeting. Now let's get out there and sell guys. And, and thinking that that solved the problem. And of course it just kicked the can down the road. Now it's going to be a problem that we have to address later because nobody 
change their behavior just because they were told in a sales meeting. Uh, so so going and, and verifying would save a lot of time down the road. Uh, it's a it's a long term gain instead of a short term. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. This is a quadrant two activity. Yeah. Yeah, for the, sure. The, the observation. It, it's also interesting that, that sometimes, you know, in, in our line of work, uh, the client doesn't want to pay for the observation. Uh, yeah. You're right. They don't always see the value in us just sitting there yep. watching stuff, yep. <laughs> you know, when sometimes that's the most valuable thing that we can right. do. Um, so, so yeah, that comes in when you think about the, 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 the client coach relationship and things like that. The uh, probably the worst example of this I saw was um, I was, I was in an automobile dealership is when I was working with, and I was got there first thing in the morning. There there had been a nice snow, a couple inches of snow the night before, and I remember the uh, the sales manager gave the the lot person uh, gave him a broom, and said, "Take this broom, and I need you to get the snow off all the cars." Lot manager's like, "On it, boss!" Hey, right. there are two ends to a broom. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's that fluffy, soft part. And unbeknownst to the sales manager, there was about two inches of snow, but before it snowed, there'd been just a slight bit of rain. So there was that little crusty, crusty coating of ice. Well, our, our man looked, you know, he looked like Freddy Krueger, uh, you know, <laughs> Norman Bates, uh, you know, he was out there yeah. just taking the, the pointy end of the broom and busting all that ice off the cars and it was going swimmingly. <laughs> um, I believe they actually had to wholesale 30 vehicles. Oh my gosh. Are you serious? Before somebody saw him and stopped him. I had not heard that story. That oh, is yeah. amazing. Yeah. That was a classic. Right? He's just out oh. there just, just, you know, nights of the round table, just hacking away at these cars oh. and uh, you know, but nobody had ever, you know, it was the first snow newer yep. employee. Nobody had ever seen. He, in this case, we didn't model it. We didn't teach it. We just expected it and nobody observed it. Uh, wow. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, it, well, so, so your other, uh, uh, if, you know, a uh, hurdle that gets in our way is that we don't know how to do it ourselves. Um, I assume you're suggesting that all of those managers step down. Yes. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yes. Well, I think that's where you, you get into, uh, right. You want people on your team smarter than you. Uh, yeah. You know, I want to be surrounded by people who can do things that I can't do. And, yeah. and you know, I had a manager and they were, we were having this talk just last week and they said, well, I'm, you know, I can't ask anybody to do something that I'm not really good at. Mm. You know, I, I just can't, I just can't, I don't feel like I'm a, an authentic leader. Yeah. And so I said, all right, so, so if you brought your car into the dealership to be worked on, would you be comfortable if the general manager of the store worked on your car? Right, right. Well, I absolutely wouldn't want him working on my car. So yes. well, why not? Well, he, he never, he's never fixed cars. I said, but yet he leads an entire department full of people yeah. <laughs> who fix cars. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, and he, yeah, he, he trusts, but he verifies uh, yeah. and, you know, but he knows enough about human human performance, human behavior, uh, that he can lead people who are doing something that he has no idea how to do himself. Yeah, and, and uh, imagine how much goodwill you build as a leader if you say, you know, Johnny, I don't know how to do that well. Let's let's do a hunt on somebody in this store who's an expert, or let's uh, you, you know, let's let's you and I look through the. Uh, you know, the training materials that we have. And, you know, I'd like you to do some homework and let's get together and together we're going to figure out how to do this. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I mean, well, and just you're more authentic at that point. Oh, yeah. And just recognizing and admitting right up front, uh, you, you know, uh, when the manager comes back and he sees a, you know, a technician and they've, you know, they've gutted a car, there's literally parts laying over a, you know, 30 square foot area. Yep. And, and the manager just looks at him and goes, I have no idea how you take these apart and put them back yep. together. I could never do this. Yep. I appreciate so much that you have this skill, this talent. Man, that feels good. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that's perfect. I love that. Well, 
I, I think it's it's just a, a very simple to do item to add to your list for for anything that you're training on, setting expectations on. Also, follow up and see if they actually can do it. That's pretty much what this episode boils down to. That's yeah. pretty clear cut. Yeah. Yeah. If you send somebody off to do do something, watch them do it the first couple of times. Then you'll know they can do it. I love it. I love it. This is a, a nice, tidy little episode, and we'll see what happens in our next episode where we go the opposite direction, Mike. And uh, I, I don't want to get anybody too excited, but we're going to be reading some Jane Austen again. Oh, the hairs on my neck stood up. I'm goose bumpily. Uh, I am all in. I, oh, wait. I think even Mr. Wolf is excited. <laughs> you can hear it in his voice. And there you have it, another session of contemporaneous extemporizing from Mark and Mike. I know it's redundant, but consider who we're talking about. As always, feel free to share the ideas you heard here. No rights to reserve, no permissions needed. Thanks. See you next time on It Doesn't Take a Genius. That's good enough. <laughs>